With the success of their first outing, the group embarked on their first tour together. It was a resounding success, with Stevie and Lindsay taking center stage as the group's new focal point. Audiences loved the smoldering sexuality of the young couple and embraced them as newfound rock royalty. The world was now theirs for the taking, and the group began recording their next album. Little did they know that the album would be more than just a record, it would be their masterpiece. It would also serve as a window into their private struggles, not the least of which was the disintegration of their personal relationships. Troubled times were ahead, and Fleetwood Mac was about to play them out in front of millions of devoted fans. Rumours is the great soap opera of rock and roll, and just like every soap opera, you almost wanted to tune in for the next episode. What would the next song tell you about them? Who wrote this? Who is singing this? Who's singing this about whom? The album started out like any other, with the group getting together and working on the individual tracks. But unlike the recording of the White Album only a little while before, the band was not a unified entity. The strains of recording, touring, and maintaining Fleetwood Mac had taken its toll on the individual members, and it led to the disintegration of not only Stevie and Lindsay's relationship, but the marriage of John and Christine McVie. Even Mick Fleetwood was not immune. His relationship with his wife had deteriorated to the point where divorce seemed like the only answer. The material reflected the inner turmoil and would leave fans with many questions. She's not really going out with him. Has she split up with, uh, with him? Is, is he having an affair with her? And the answer in most cases was yes. <laughs> if, if, anything you could think of, of that lot doing to and with each other, they probably were. The album played like a dialogue between band members, with each trying to get in the final word. They ranged from blistering attacks to songs of condolence. John McVie, for one, was having a terrible time of things, as his soon-to-be ex-wife Christine had developed a relationship with one of the band's road crew. He found a novel way of coping. He was probably on his yacht before he even realised what was going to go on top of it, because he'd record all his bass parts. And he didn't know, didn't care what the songs were, you know. So he probably, whoa, what's this about when he actually got the album or something? I don't know, that's my supposition. But, but yes, but, but jokes apart, it must have been difficult for them doing that. The music is certainly the members of the band speaking to each other through, through the music. Um, maybe they couldn't actually sit down in a conversation and sit down and have a conversation with each other, so they had to talk through music. And I think most of the fans picked up on that. They, they knew that this couple, Stevie and Lindsay, had broken up and Mick and John had broken up, and uh, they were talking amongst themselves. The only side effect was that poor John, <laughs> who didn't write any lyrics, <laughs> couldn't actually speak back. Though the breakup of John and Christine was by far the more serious matter, considering that it involved a divorce, it was the split between Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham that dominated the thoughts of fans around the world.